Today we're talking about factoring. And factoring is the process of taking a term or an expression like 8 and turning it into a product, something like 4 times 2. This is essentially factoring, creating factors. Today though we're talking more about factoring trinomials where we have an expression using algebra, using variables. So first example, we'll look at something like an x squared plus a 6x plus an 8. When asked to turn that into a product, most people would think, well, there's addition. How do you turn it into a product? And the process for doing this can be quite logically done by looking at factors of the first term and writing them vertically. Now, there's not a lot of choice between an x squared. Really, there is an x times an x. Factors of the 8 could be an 8 and a 1, or a 4 and a 2, but we do write the factors vertically. Now, I'll do this wrong the first time. If I were to try the 8 and the 1 option, there is a way to test to see if this is the right choice. What we can do is diagonally multiply the 8 times the x, diagonally multiply the x times the 1, x times 1, 1x, add them together, which gives you the 9x. What you're looking for is for your sum of your diagonal products to match your middle term. In this case, they don't, so this is not the correct choice. So if we were to try this again using maybe an x times an x and a 4 times a 2, and diagonally check the product of 4x, the product of 2x, add it together, which gives you the 6x. In this case, 6x matches the 6x that we're looking for. And so in this case, the correct factors are an x plus 4 and an x plus 2. So the correct factors would get written horizontally as x plus 4 and x plus 2. That is our final answer. So we can see that it may take a first attempt or a second attempt uh, the more factors that are possible, the more we would have to try. So putting negatives into this option does create more possibilities, but the process is still the same. Let's try an x squared minus an x minus a 6. Factors vertically would give us an x and an x for the first term, and then we have a choice between a 1 and a 6, 3 and a 2. Now again, positive or negative. And you might have to try a few, but the hope is that after a few attempts, we would see that the only choice that does work is a negative 3 and a positive 2, because again, as we check, we have a negative 3x, a positive 2x, add them together, and we have the negative 1x that we're looking for. Eventually, this does become much more fluid and simple the more that you've tried. So we're not done until we write our x plus 2, our x plus 3, our x minus 3, and our x plus 2. Now, so far all I've looked at are cases where the number in front of the x squared is a 1. The number in front of the x squared is a 1. What happens when the number is not a 1? And we have something like a 4x squared minus an 8x minus a 5. Now, all that matters is our front x times x is a little bit more complex. We have a choice of a 4x, 1x, 2x, 2x, as well as a 5 and a 1, or a 1 and a 5, positive or negative. So really, our options have just increased greatly. Now, again, you might try a 4 and a 1. You might try a 2 and a 2. And I'll leave this for you to try. You can pause the video now, as the answer is 2x times 2x, a 1 times a 5, negative would have to be on the negative 5, so that when you diagonally multiply, we have our 2x, our negative 10x, which adds together to make the negative 8x that we were hoping for. So factors written horizontally are a 2x plus a 5 and a 2x minus a 5. Not done until we write that down. 2x plus 1 and a 2x minus a 5. Try a few more. 
And the more practice you do, I promise, the easier it gets.